sides and stuff. And so again, you have like billions of dollars being spent to eradicate this plant. And the question is why? Why are we spending so much money trying to get rid of a plant that perhaps has come here as a resource, perhaps has an intelligent plan, and has come here to offer us something? And so what we're discovering is the offering is that, oh my God, it's really good for Lyme's disease. Okay, a really prevalent disease that we have going on right here. So perhaps we should look at it as this plant showed up on the scene as a hero to treat Lyme's disease. And if we had a medical system that really reflected nature, then we probably would be like, wow, look, a solution is being posed by nature for us. Um, so herbalists treat Lyme. This is one of the herbs in the Lyme protocol that's very important and very significant. So this plant has something called resveratrol, which is coincidentally now being put into bottles and put into health food stores. So the issues with knotweed is it's pretty hard to dig out. It takes it takes a bit of work, but that's part of your healing process. Going out, cut it and use the stems and leaves. Yeah, you can use the stems and leaves. Um, you don't feel like cleaning it out. Yes, but the real deep medicine is in the roots. Um, and so obviously you want to dig roots in the spring and the fall when it's taking all the nutrients that it put up for flowering and making seeds and putting them back in roots. So that's when it's its most potent. So with herbalism, you always want to consider what season is the right season to harvest what you need. So flowers are about summer. You know, we're flowering in the summer and spring and fall is about the time when we're awakening. Uh, spring is the awakening of all the nutrients from the roots from the long winter. And the fall is when we're going back into hibernation. So that is a cycle that applies to every level of life. And we're trying to get out of that cycle. We think we should be eating the same way, we should be working the same amount, we should be sleeping the same amount every season. Now, you know how you feel a little more lethargic in the winter? That's important. You should. You're supposed to sleep a little more in the winter. And that's how to avoid getting so sick and running down our immune system. So Japanese knotweed shoots can be eaten. This is kind of the wrong time to eat them. And usually in the springtime, they're more succulent. Um, so when they're young, and when they first come up, they're succulent and they can be eaten. Um, the shoots, as you can see, grow pretty tall. So these are examples of taller shoots. That name is Polygonum cuspidatum. And, uh, polygonum cuspidatum is Javi Lowe? Yeah. And so polygonum or polygonum means many joints or many elbows. So you see these kind of like bamboo. See how every oh, foot yeah. or so? It's got these joints and that will be the node where the leaf stem shoots out. And so that's just what is meant by many joints. So you can see here it's making seeds. Mm. And these seeds are like either a bane or a blessing, depending on how you view this plant, because this is going to spread it. Um, the interesting thing is the polygonum family is in, the polygonum genus is in the buckwheat family. So you can see actually, if you get these open, all the buckwheat, like, you know, oh, traditional yeah. buckwheat and everything, has these kind of teardrop shaped seeds. So, so resveratrol is a profound anti-inflammatory. So, when we have inflammation, inflammatory diseases, they all start, uh, they all end with itis. So who knows of an itis disease? Tonsillitis. Appendicitis. Yeah. What else? Arthritis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all these colitis. diseases. Colitis. Bursitis. Bursitis. Appendicitis. Appendicitis. Yep. So these are all an inflammatory conditions. They are due to the fact that something is inflaming. Uh, so if we think about like energetically or psychologically, we're thinking about fire and aggression. Okay, fire and aggression, overreaction is inflammation. Okay, so the body and the organs also infl inflame. So resveratrol is a powerful anti-inflammatory. And I think it's quite interesting how basically we have an industry, we've, we basically have a society that says, oh no, this stuff, we need to spray it with chemicals, we need to get rid of it, we need to get rid of this thing, and then, They'll actually take this and extract resveratrol and put it on the shelf for you to buy. And I think that's really kind of a bizarre thing. So 
what I really think we need as a society, as humanity, is to empower ourselves to recognize that, like, hey man, why don't you go dig that stuff out of your backyard? So I do know that some people use the stalks when they're uh, succulent. They put them in like smoothies and stuff and they'll just blend them as they are. Um, so we're, we're thinking about how we can consume this. Now, right now, there's not much consumability out of it. It's pretty much like a piece of wood. See that? start to feel some parallel runners and so those runners are going to be uh, connecting all the plants. Rhizomes usually are run parallel so these spread not only by seed they spread by rhizomes so uh, you know it'll just keep spreading and keep spreading. Am I doing invasive plant removal or am I harvesting medicine? So doesn't that seem to make the most sense yes. to make them the same thing? You know, and most of the invasive plants have incredible medicinal values to them. Let's see what we've got there. That's the parallel runner rhizome. So that's the part we want. So that's a version, you know, a small version. Obviously, if I'm digging out a bigger plant, it's going to have a much thicker rhizome. So if I just broke this here, this is the highest source of resveratrol in the world right here, and uh, a potent medicinal substance that reduces inflammation in the body, is a healer for Lyme's disease, um, and so many other things. So any I, negative effects if you take it and no, you don't have one of these? No, no negative effects. And the worst that it will do is um, help your body to remain um, flexible and, and healthy because you know inflammation is a very subtle thing that takes a very long time to build up and enough like it, it begins on a molecular and cellular level and once enough of those cells become inflamed then it produces an external physical symptom you know but it starts with like omega fatty three acids which are built by everything we do, you know. So omega fatty threes and omega fatty sixes and omega fatty nine acids, they're all created through the foods we consume, the stress level that we have, the stress level that the foods we consume had. Okay, so omega fatty threes and omega fatty sixes are the determining chemicals of inflammation. So omega fatty nine is an inflammatory chemical and it's a very small level. So um, Omega fatty threes are for reducing inflammation, and so we. So like plantain seeds. Yeah, have omega fatty three acids. Um, so eggs, okay, eggs have omega fatty acids. Depending on what that chicken eats and the stress <coughs> level it exists in, will determine on its own ratio of omega fatty three, six, and nine acids. Now it's said that most Americans have 20 to one ratio of omega fatty nines to omega fatty threes. So that means you're t what, 20 times or whatever more um, prone to inflammatory problems. Inflammation is good. You need some inflammation. That's what stops your body from like, if you break your leg, you're like if you try to do jumping jacks, the inflammation and the pain will say, stop trying to do jumping jacks, rest. So it's a very important factor, but um, since we're getting such a higher ratio than we need, we have a lot of inflammatory issues. So it could be um, perhaps that Japanese knotweed is here to work with all the itis uh, diseases that we have, which are so prevalent in this country, and that's what we always hear about. And if you watch the TV long enough, you'll probably see a commercial for every single one of them. <laughs> Do you have bursitis? Do you have arthritis? Do you have osteoarthritis? Do you you know, and this is like more wisteria. Now, would you steep it? Would you grind it? What would you do? With this, I want to increase surface level. So, what I would do with this is I would put uh, small pieces in a coffee grinder. Now, I have broken a coffee grinder doing that, so be careful. But you can take a hatchet, you can do whatever you can, and just chop this as small as you can. 
and you can boil it or then further powder it. So Japanese knotweed is an amazing medicine. There's no really such thing as invasive plants as far as I see it. It's all potential medicine and like this is the economic stimulus we need right here. Like where do we need to go? Somewhere else? This would be a great way to uh, create an industry for herbal medicines.